Let me say by way of preface, there's a good little book by C.S. Lewis called The Screwtape Letters. And in it, he's talking about Satan and demons, and he makes this interesting statement. There are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to disbelieve in their existence. The other is to believe and to feel an excessive and unhealthy interest in them. What he says is, as soon as you say demons, people go one of two ways. They don't exist. I don't worry about them. I don't believe in them. Move on. You're making me feel awkward. Okay, that's some of you. Others of you, will have an unhealthy and inordinate obsession with Satan and demons. You will blame them for everything, just like Eve did in Genesis 3, the devil made me do it. And you'll find a demon in everything, everything. And some people really get freaked out and it's like, oh, my coffee's hotter today than it was yesterday. Hell is hot. This must be the coffee demon coming to scald me for my enemy. I mean, it's, it's just, it's goofy. It's gooftastic. That's where some people go. <laughs> They go gooftastic on it. Now, the reason some of you would deny Satan and demons, number one, um, you may be influenced by what we'll call modernism and a few hundred year enlightenment project where scientific rationalism said that there is only physical, there is no spiritual. So you don't believe in a spirit realm at all, particularly Satan and demons. Some of you as well may not believe in Satan and demons because you suffer from something called chronological snobbery. You think that they were primitive and they didn't understand things and so they invented mythical figures and now you've gone to community college and you are highly developed and evolved and you're smarter than they were. Some of you will deny Satan and demons as well because you believe in spirituality. Spirituality is demonology. Just because it is spiritual does not mean it is good. Much of what is spiritual is demonic and satanic. And we live in a day when as long as you are spiritual, you are fine. You may not be fine. Your yoga, your meditation, your religion, your spirituality, your supernatural experience may all be demonic, satanic. So I don't want you to have an unhealthy, inordinate obsession with Satan and demons. We believe in them, but we emphasize Jesus and I don't want you to deny them or settle for just vague general spirituality. But as Christ did, we will encounter Satan and demons. Clinton Arnold, in my opinion, the best New Testament scholar on Satan and demons, written some of the finest commentary about Satan and demons that has been written in the modern era. He makes this interesting statement. He says that a servant of Christ can no more avoid demons than a gardener can avoid weeds. Right? If you're going to serve Jesus, you're going to meet demons. Just like if you're going to tend your garden, you're going to pull weeds. That's just the way that it is. That's just the way that it is. Now, let me tell you a few things about Satan. He is not equal to God. That's number one. Number one, Satan is not equal to God. It's not like there's two gods, good God, bad God, right? yin and yang. It's not it. There's God the creator and created things. Satan is among the created things. Satan was an angel created by God to glorify, honor, obey, and serve him. If you want to read more, go to Ezekiel 14. You can do this for personal study and community groups. I've also got a whole lecture on Satan and demons that I did for the staff. It's online. We can give you the link to that with 20 pages of notes. We've done a lot of work on this. But nonetheless, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, Genesis 3, Ephesians 6. If I was going to give you four places to go, off the top of my head, Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 28, Genesis 3, Ephesians 6. You put those together, you're going to have a really good idea, theologically speaking, about Satan and demons. But the first thing you need to know is Satan and demons are not equal to God. They're created beings. They are angels who rebelled against God. Satan was cast down out of heaven those angels who declare war on God with him were cast down with him. So we're talking about Satan. He's not creator. God is. He's not all present, omnipresent. God is. He's not omnipotent, all knowing. God is. He's not all powerful. God is. Right? He's, he doesn't share the attributes of God. He's not equal to God. He's not the other God. He's a created being in rebellion against God. Number two. 
Satan is not our only enemy. Satan does work through false teachers, false apostles, false Christians, false religions. He does have an entire army at his service. Liars, unrepentant sinners included. But also the Bible gives us three categories of opposition, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Now, there is Satan and demons. And you, even if you're getting attacked spiritually, it's probably not by Satan. All right, Satan can only attack one person at a time. He can send a limited number of demons to attack a limited number of persons. All right, Satan's probably harassing Billy Graham, probably not you, right? If you're getting harassed, it's probably not Satan. It's one of his servants, it's a demon. So there's the devil, there's the world of flesh and the devil. Now the flesh is our internal predisposition toward rebellion. It's our own, full, own sinful tendencies and proclivities. It's our own sick desires to rebel and do evil. And so some of you, your real issue isn't Satan at all. It's your flesh. Again, if there's a limited number of demons, why in the world would Satan commission a demon to attack you if you're already destroying yourself? If it's a battle and you've got your own gun in your mouth, why in the world would Satan send one of his few soldiers to attack you? You're gonna kill yourself. And some of you are doing it through habitual, unrepentant sin, spirituality, false religion, pride, arrogance, all of that. And Satan's favorite tactic is pride. The reason he was cast out of heaven was pride. He tempts pride. We call it self-esteem. Any of you who are bound by these things, it is not that Satan needs to attack you. Your flesh is taking care of it. Pride, religion, sex, drugs, gluttony, foolishness, spirituality, stupidity, religion. Uh, you've just got the gun in your mouth. You can't blame Satan. There's the devil, there's the flesh, there's also the world. The world is the corporate systems and structures and ideologies that are opposed to God. If you believe what everyone believes, if you behave as everyone behaves, you will be living a satanic life. You just well, now it may be a spiritual life, but it'll be a satanically spiritual life. 